Everybody should own a treasury of best-loved poems to dip into and peruse from time to time. Our recommendations today are two epic poems. Poems that are so long, they are books in themselves. 100 Books You Must Read, number 52 and 53, Evangeline and the Song of Hiawatha by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Both of these epic poems are loosely based on historical events, but they are poems, not grave historical tomes, so some artistic license is taken. Evangeline is the story of a young girl who is Acadian, and how her people were forcibly expelled years ago from their homes in Nova Scotia, Canada. She is separated from her beloved, Gabriel Lajeunesse, and only finds him years later on his deathbed. When I say it like that, it doesn't sound too cheerful, now does it? The Introduction this is the forest primeval, the murmuring pines and the hemlocks, bearded with moss and in garments green, indistinct in the twilight, stand like druids about with voices sad and prophetic, stand like harpers hoar, with beards that rest on their bosoms. Loud from its rocky caverns, the deep-voiced neighboring ocean speaks, and in accents disconsolate, answers the wail of the forest. Another quote. Ye who believe in affection that hopes and endures and is patient, ye who believe in the beauty and strength of woman's devotion, list to the mournful tradition still sung by the pines of the forest. The poem is in dactylic hexameter, each line being made of six dactyls, a dactyl being a stressed syllable followed by two unstressed syllables. The Song of Hiawatha is based on Native American legends and tells the story of Hiawatha and his happily named beloved, Minnehaha. The introduction. Should you ask me whence these stories, whence these legends and traditions, with the odors of the forest, with the dew and damp of meadows, with the curling smoke of wigwams, with the rushing of great rivers, with their frequent repetitions and their wild reverberations as of thunder in the mountains? But the most famous section? By the shores of Gitchigumi, by the shining big sea water, stood the wigwam of Nokomis, daughter of the moon Nokomis, Dark behind it rose the forest, rose the black and gloomy pine trees, rose the firs with cones upon them, right before it beat the water, beat the clear and sunny water, beat the shining big sea water. This poem is in trochaic tetrameter, each line being made of four trochies, a troche being a stressed syllable followed by an unstressed syllable. And now, just a little more poetry to brighten your day. Sonnet number 30 by William Shakespeare whose favorite poetic meter was iambic pentameter, each line being made of five iams, an unstressed syllable followed by a stressed syllable. When to the sessions of sweet, silent thought, I summon up remembrance of things past, I sigh the lack of many a thing I sought, and with old woes new wail my dear time's waste. Then can I drown an eye unused to flow, for precious friends hid in death's stateless night and weep afresh love's long-since-cancelled woe, and moan the expense of many a vanished sight. Then can I grieve at grievances foregone, and heavily from woe to woe tell o'er the sad account of for the moaned moan, which I knew pay as if not paid before. But if the while I think on thee, dear friend, all losses are restored, and sorrows end. <laughs>